Ohio Supreme Court is weighing in on just how far U.S. colleges can go to achieve a diverse student body. At issue, admissions policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. Both colleges use race as an admissions factor. And joining us here in our studio today is Jeremiah Poff, education reporter with the Washington Examiner. Jeremiah, great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. So those who are not familiar with this case, can you give us a, a brief synopsis of what's going on here? So so you have the Supreme Court is hearing or heard a case on Monday challenging the uh, constitutionality of affirmative action. You have two cases that were involved here. One was a group called Students for Fair Admissions versus, Har versus Harvard, and then a second one from the same group against the University of North Carolina. The Harvard case is unique because the uh, group alleges that the, this Ivy League prestigious university is discriminating against Asian American students by um, artificially suppressing the number that they admit by through various means. Um, the, the, the UNC case is a little less straightforward, or a little less uh, controversial, I guess, in that it's just more challenging the admission practices of whether or not you can consider race in college admissions, which is also part of the Harvard case. Yeah, and I know that uh, both schools are defending their use of race as, as an admissions factor, saying it helps to uh, achieve a diverse student body. I'm curious, what did the judges have to say about that? Right, so it was kind of interesting, you see, you, with, the ju with the justices kind of through their questioning, kind of making clear kind of where they were leaning one way or another. Um, uh, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson was, rec was recused from the Harvard case because she was formerly uh, a member of the Board of Overseers there, but she did participate in the oral arguments for the UNC case. And she was very, con very much concerned about that this could lead to equal protection violations and stuff like that. And then, um, although in, in the Harvard case, uh, Justice Alito really pressed uh, the Harvard lawyer, Seth Waxman, on the on, on how they rated Asian applicants on their personality score, which were significantly lower than uh, students of other races. So there was, the, the lawyer for Harvard didn't really kind of danced around the issue and, and, and didn't quite offer a straight answer, but uh, Alita really pressed him on that. Yeah, what do you think this will mean ultimately for public and also private colleges? Well, if the court rules the way many people expect them to, which is likely a 6-3 conservative majority ruling outlying affirmative action and overturning the 2003 case of Greta versus Bollinger, which is what the Harvard plaintiffs have asked, um, you could see um, universities would no longer be able to, use, to consider race as a factor when uh, admitting a student. Currently, they're allowed to do so on a very limited basis as a kind of a secondary uh, consideration. So if you have two students that have the same SAT scores, the same GPA, okay, well, we're going to admit the, the black student or the, uh, or the Hispanic student over the Asian or the white student. So they would no longer be able to do that. They'd have to look at other factors to make the distinction between the two yeah, students. And when are we expecting a decision to come down? Uh, probably sometime in the spring. Most of the, most of the controversial decisions don't come until June, so that'll probably be one. All right. All eyes will be on that. We have probably about a minute left or so. Uh, but what else are you following? What are you working on? Well, with the midterm elections coming up next week, um, most people are focusing on Congress and and uh, and the Senate. Obviously, the Senate races and the and the House races. I'm focused a little bit more on the school board races down ballot, and I think uh, there's been a, a, a much stronger interest in this issue lately, and over the last year especially, uh, Governor DeSantis in Florida endorsed to a number of school board races uh, this year, and so I think you're seeing a, a renewed interest among conservatives in these nonpartisan races um, taking on whether or not, you know, uh, running for school board races and, and trying to flip their the, those seats from more tilted toward the teacher union favored candidates. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. Jeremiah, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.